Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Experience Shakespeare. I'm Cassie Cash, that Shakespeare girl. In Elizabethan England, the only way to see if you were going to get things done was by using candles. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, so only was too big of a word here. Candles were popular and so were oil lamps. And I tell you more about the various kinds of lighting available to William Shakespeare later in the episode. So keep watching. Welcome to Experience Shakespeare, the show where we take a piece of Shakespeare's history and show you how it's done and how you can experience Shakespeare for yourself. If you're new here, please hit like and subscribe as we're here every Saturday with even more Shakespeare. I'm here in Florence, Alabama with members of the Algelson Society that travels around the Southeast and nationally doing living history demonstrations from the 16th and 17th century. And today they're going to show us how to make candles. Specifically, these are going to be beeswax candles, which would have been more popular in churches rather than in homes. For William Shakespeare, he'd have likely used what's called a tallow candle. It's made from animal fat, which would have been processed from the animals living on the farm. But they're very stinky, and when you burn them, they smoke a lot. So they're not as usable as beeswax candles. And that's the kind of candle that we're going to be making in today's episode. To start making candles, we used ready-made beeswax. Obviously, in the 16th century, they would have had to go to a store and buy this that someone else had made, or they would have had to have made it from the beeswax being created from honey being produced on the farm or sourced it in a different way than we have in today's video. But we took ready-made beeswax, it's just pure beeswax, and we put it in a pot and melted it. Now, to do these, when you're doing the, the dipped, you first have to measure your depth because you want your, your weight at the end of it. And during the 16th century, this weight would most likely have been clay of some sort, just enough to give it some weight. So you check your depth because you want your stick to be able to sit at the top if needed. So that's about right. You're gonna take it and dip it down into your wax and then slowly pull it up and which each pass, it will add more wax to it. And it just coats it over and over and over and that turns into a candle? Yep. Uh, we should have a tapered candle about four or five inches. How many dips into the wax does that take? Uh, depends on how thick you want it. It can take up to 20 to 30 or up to over a hundred depending on how thick you want your candle. On what kind of candle you want. Yep. Now these are it's nice and simple, but this is the, the long way of going about it. There are quicker ways where you can use molds. This is an example of a colonial candle mold. Now this is dating after Shakespeare, so it being made of metal and a couple of other features come after Shakespeare's died, but it gives you an idea of what kind of molds would have been available. And this is just a process that you do over and over. Would you do this like once a year to make a household stash of candles? Or did they have, you know, re a regular part of their lives was to make candles? Well, there, most households didn't actually use candles. They would use oil lamps. Uh, the upper class the, and later on what became the uh, rich middle class uh, they would use candles and they would go to their local candle maker to actually buy candles usually or if they were making them from tallow then yeah they would make them in the house. Okay. There were several other forms of supplemental lighting besides candles that were common in the home. Rush lights, cruise lights, Betty lamps, and in Scotland in particular, there were even fur candles. Any kind of liquid that would burn could be placed in a container that did not burn, like clay, and would make a great option for fueling lights in the home. As time passed, they would learn which options were safer than others, and things would evolve in terms of lighting, but 16th century England for William Shakespeare, there were lots of ways to light your works space after the sun went down. Cruises were an open bowl type lamp made out of iron or pottery and any drippings from the kitchen would work for fuel. You could use mutton oil or fish oil and even whale or seal oil could be used. They were often square and were tipped in at the corners where you could lay the wick and have it soak up the fat while it burned. 
Betty lamps were a closed oil burning lamp and were often made of tin. There was a wick fed down through the spout and a pick wick was periodically used to clear off the end of the wick when it would get dirty or adjust the wick's height. There were even industrial whaling companies that got produced during the 16th century specifically because of the whale oil demand for these kind of lamps. Now, even though lamps were available in numerous variety, candles were just as popular during Shakespeare's lifetime. In fact, fact, the Blackfriars Theater incorporated candles made from tallow, which were cheaper than beeswax, but required more maintenance because they would burn really quickly. During each performance of the Blackfriars Theater, you could burn up to 100 candles or even more. Stagehands stayed busy replacing the candles or trimming the wick at least four times over the course of a show. And there were chandeliers hired to manually raise and lower the candled chandeliers for lighting effects during the show. Candles remained popular and were a widely used source of stage lights in theaters until 1783, which marks the invention of the kerosene lamp with an adjustable wick. And besides that, candles are just very fun to make. So that's our focus today. So it would probably take up to a week or so to actually make Look at that. enough it's... candles to last a year. As you can see, it just builds and builds. It turns into a candle. And it turns into a candle. That's awesome. Can I, can I do it once? Can sure. I start it? You can. I'll keep your finger on the string. On the string. And I've been putting it kind of in the corner because there's still a bit of a wax blob in there. Okay. And like that? Yep. Just dip it down. Dip it up. And pull it up and let it stand for about 10 seconds. And then dip it back down. Nice and easy. And pull up slow. And you can see. Ha! I see the rings you were talking about. Yeah. Because yeah. everywhere that you stopped when you dipped mm -hmm. it in there. And that's, and that's how they build the layers. And it, each layer is like less than an eighth of an inch thick. Wow. So imagine doing this for long periods of time, building enough candles to see you through the winter. Yes, I mean, you watch some of these old, like, uh, movies where people get so mad about their candles breaking, and I always oh. thought they were just uppity, but if it took this much work to do it, <laughs> you're gonna be upset if it breaks. You can use something like this, which is a little handy, <laughs> like, pockety knife. Okay. And you just cut it off. Okay. And you can see, it's still warm. Oh, and it's wow. very so soft. it does need to dry before you could yeah use otherwise okay. you light it and it would go Pleh. right okay so once it's fully cooled though you slice the bottom off and would you put this in a holder or how would they have displayed it similar to this okay just this, a candle holder just a candle holder holder built for tapers but if you see you can see how big this hole is yes and then you see how big the candle is <laughs> And you're still wow. got so, yeah. more than my thumb to go. Okay. So either a lot of dipping or make a small candle holder. Yes. Okay. This video was made in partnership with the Eggleston Society based in Florence, Alabama. We are grateful to the Eggleston Society for sharing of their time and expertise to teach us something about Shakespeare's history. If you enjoyed this video, please check out the other episode we made with the Eggleston Society on rapier and daggers, which you can watch here. The links to that, as well as how you can get involved with the Eggleston Society and learn Shakespeare's history the hands-on way, all in the links for today's show notes. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next week.